Monsieur le Président. Mr. President, Heads of State and Government, Secretary General, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor to deliver this statement on behalf of the African Group and the Caribbean Community, AFCAR, on the subject Reparations, Racial Justice and Equality for People of African Descent. Mr. President, first of all, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate you for having convened this high-level plenary meeting to commemorate the 20th anniversary of the adoption of the Durban Declaration and Program of Action. We welcome the theme of this event because it focuses our attention on issues of common interest to Africans including Africans from the diaspora. It summarizes our urgent need and our shared aspiration to achieve a just, free and equitable society which defines our common humanity. Mr. President, we acknowledge that some progress has been made since the adoption of the Durban Declaration and Program of Action 20 years ago. However, we have many more obstacles to overcome because Africans in general and Africans from the diaspora in particular continue to face problems of inequalities. We have noted the alarming uptick in racial discrimination around the world. The COVID-19 pandemic has further exacerbated this. We know that the COVID-19 pandemic has upended lives and livelihoods around the world. We have found ourselves in a situation where some countries have more than enough vaccines, while other countries, such as ours, in particular the LDCs, the least developed countries, and the SIDS, the small island developing states, only have access to a small quantity of COVID-19 vaccines and other medical necessities. This clearly does not demonstrate equality between the countries and peoples of this world. Real efforts are needed to guarantee the achievement of the goals and objectives of the Durban Declaration and Program of Action. The aforementioned notwithstanding, we reaffirm our support for the declaration of the 21st of March of East Year as the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination and the 31st of August as the International Day of People of African Descent. We are pleased to note that the first International Day of People of African Descent was celebrated. These acts demonstrate global commitments to eliminating racism and recognize the immense contributions made by people of African descent. Mr. President, we recall that more than five years have passed since the international community agreed to implement the International Decade for People of African Descent. We are aware of the racial prejudices and discrimination that people of African descent continue to face today. We take due note of the way in which the international community deals with these challenges. We are, however, satisfied as a government and member states that since the adoption of the Durban Declaration and Program of Action 20 years ago, have implemented progressive, progressive legislative and administrative measures to effectively combat racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia and related intolerance. Even more importantly, we congratulate all of those who appreciate and respect the knowledge and contribution of people of African descent to their society, be it the new economy, politics, culture, education, medicine, innovation, entrepreneurship, or elsewhere. We would like to express our gratitude to member states for having adopted by consensus the resolution creating the Permanent Forum for People of African Descent on 2nd of August 2021. AFCAR welcomes the creation
Foundation Policy Development Forum for people of African descent, which will serve both as a consultative mechanism as well as a platform for improving the safety, quality of life, and livelihoods of people of African descent. We see the creation of this forum as demonstrating member states' cooperation with and support for the healing process for people of African descent. We are convinced that this forum will have a significant impact in the quest to bring an end to race-related injustices. We also reaffirm the international decade of people of African descent which was implemented in 2015 and which will end in 2024 under the themes of recognition, justice and development. AFCAR believes that all of these efforts and commitments are unique and timely opportunities to underscore the important contribution made by people of African descent in their societies and to propose tangible measures to promote equality and to combat all forms of discrimination. Mr. President, the 2030 Agenda and the Sustainable Development Goals envisage a world of universal respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms for all, that is to say human dignity, the rule of law, justice, equality and non-discrimination, and respect for race, ethnicity and cultural diversity which lay at the heart of the pursuit of these objectives, of these goals. The African Group and CARICOM believe that empowering individuals and ensuring inclusion and equality in all walks of life is an obligation for us all required by our shared humanity. We affirm that the right to good quality education for all citizens helps contribute to more inclusive societies, equity, including harmonious relations between nations and individuals, and can help promote mutual understanding and respect for cultural diversity and human rights and fundamental freedoms for all. The Durban Declaration and Program of Action also affirms the promotion of the complete and accurate inclusion of the history and the contribution of people of African descent in educational curricula, among other things. Mr. President, AFCAR believes that the responsibility to effectively combat acts of racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia and into related intolerance is incumbent upon states and affirms that each time such acts take place they must be firmly condemned, they must be stopped from happening again, and we call on all, including member states, to take preventive measures, including legislative and administrative measures. We therefore welcome the adoption of legislative measures and the implementation of specialized mechanisms to combat racism and all forms of racial discrimination, xenophobia, intolerance, uh, related intolerance, and we recognize the need to mainstream a gender perspective in policies, strategies, and programs to combat all forms. Mr. President, AFCAR calls upon governments to strengthen protection against racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia and related intolerance by ensuring that all people have access to effective and appropriate recourse and at the same time have the right to go to competent national courts and other just and appropriate national institutions to request reparations and satisfaction for all damages resulting from such discrimination. The African group supports the Caribbean community in their calls for repatriate justice. We are of the view that reparations for slavery and colonialism should not only include responsibility for historic wrongs, but also eliminating the scars of racial inequality, subordination 
and discrimination which were built under slavery, apartheid and colonialism, as well as debt cancellation. What's more, as long as the repercussions of slavery and colonialism, such as poverty and unequal access to education, housing and justice, persist, the call for reparatory justice will remain one of the most critical priorities for the Caribbean community are firmly convinced that sustainable development and respect, promotion and protection of all human rights and fundamental freedoms for all as well as the implementation of international obligations and commitments in the area of human rights in accordance with international human rights law are essential to prevent acts of racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia and related intolerance. In this respect, AFCAR welcomes the creation of a new independent expert mechanism under the Human Rights Council. We look forward to seeing the transformative nature of this mechanism, in particular in the areas of racial justice and equality in the context of the application of laws at the global level. Mr. President, Heads of State and Government, Mr. Secretary General, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. In conclusion, we reiterate the full and effective implementation of the Durban Declaration and Programme of Action in accordance with the Addis Ababa Action Agenda and we approve all efforts devoted to the promotion of respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms for people of African descent in particular. We believe it is time for all of the instruments that have been adopted to be implemented with dignity, respect and recognition in accordance with the priorities that have been agreed with people of African descent around the world. Their voices must be included on all questions that affect them and their lives so that no one is left behind. Thank you.